We're going to look at these changes through the lens of what we refer to as the four, and that is Amazon, Apple, Facebook, and Google. To understand these companies is to understand e-commerce, to understand media, to understand monopoly abuse, uh, to understand technology. The markets love Apple. Now, why is that? Because Apple has been able to increase the percentage of revenue it gets from recurring revenues, things like Apple Music, right, to 20, 22% of its total revenue. And the marketplace loves recurring revenue. The marketplace loves monogamy. When you enter into a long-term relationship with your consumer, think about a gym membership or syndicated research or a cable company being able to get dependable cash flows. The marketplace loves that and it sees Apple continuing to increase its percentage of revenues that it gets from these recurring subscription revenues. Now over one in five dollars, almost one in four are garnered through recurring revenues. So what you see is when a company dramatically increases its shareholder price at a much greater clip than it increases its revenues or even its profits, typically what you'll find is that this company has enacted the most accretive move in business history, and that, it is, it is, and that is it has moved to recurring revenue. So let's talk about Amazon, right? It's, it's almost impossible to talk about retail without talking about the Seattle behemoth. Since the start of the pandemic, Amazon is up 64%, the s and is up 40%, and the Cosby is up 26%. Amazon's shareholder gains have been so dramatic that they typically come at the cost of other retailers. Now, why is that different? Most retailers usually trade in sympathy with one another. If one stock goes up, so do the rest. Now we've seen that when Amazon stock goes up, the rest of the retail industry typically goes down because people see Amazon as being so disruptive that it's not growing the market, it's actually taking share away from other uh, retailers. Now, there's a lot of upside to this. One in 153 workers in the United States actually work for Amazon. It's the first company in US history to hire more than 500,000 people in one year. It is dominant in retail. There isn't really a conversation about retail without talking about Amazon. One in two e-commerce dollars, or about 50% of all e-commerce in the United States flows through one retailer, and that retailer is Amazon. Now, why is that a bad thing? Big in and among itself isn't necessarily a bad thing. But what we see with Amazon is their dominance is so extraordinary that they're able to extract greater and greater rents. What do we mean by rents? An economic term for the price or the margin you capture above what it costs you to deliver that product or service. And in the last nine years, Amazon has been able to extract or increase their rents from 19% of third-party retailers. That is, if you're selling a product for $100 on Amazon, typically you would have to give $19 to Amazon. That has increased to 34%. So as they have consolidated the market, as they have become more dominant, they have been able to slowly but surely increase the rents on their partners, their third-party retailers. Okay, let's talk about the remaining three and four of the four, Google and Facebook. We saw in Corona that ad budgets actually declined dramatically. People were unsure about their spending and they pulled back on advertising. But it's great to be in a position to play offense when everyone else is playing defense. Google, Facebook, and Amazon took advantage of everyone playing defense and being on their heels and decided to get on its toes. And now they represent about 70 or 80 cents on the digital dollar as it, relates to, uh, as it relates to digital marketing in the United States. Why were they able to do this? Because they have so much cash on hand. These are companies that have enough cash on hand to purchase Boeing and Airbus for cash and still have money left over. So what did they do in this period of incredible turmoil during the pandemic? They increased their hiring. They increased their spending. That is, it's one of the preliminary lessons in strategy. When everyone else is playing defense, it's an extraordinary opportunity for you to play offense. Now, why is that a bad thing? Effectively, what we have now in the world of digital is we have three giant toll booths named Amazon, named Facebook, 
And finally, Google. If you invest $100 in a venture capital firm that then goes on to fund smaller companies, 40 cents on the dollar you invest in a venture capital firm will end up going to Amazon, Facebook, or Google. Why? These three firms have managed to sequester the entire online universe and put up a toll booth in front of us. If you want to acquire people for an online education firm, then you better be advertising on Facebook. If you want to acquire people for your e-commerce company, if you want to get people to download your streaming offering, you have to pay the piper. In this case, the piper is either Amazon, Facebook, or Google.